All right, today we're going to be talking about the domain of a function. You already know what a function is. We've had a definition of a function already, and today we're going to talk about the domain of a function. So everything they're going to give you in this lesson will be functions already, and they'll ask you to find the domain. And so this is just vocabulary, oh. and then um, understanding, and then applying that vocabulary. So once you figure out what the domain is, you'll have to find the domain and stuff, okay? So we're going to define this for a minute. And so um, what I've drawn here is kind of like a little system. Something that goes into a machine. This is a machine, a function machine, okay? Something goes into the machine, and then something happens in here. It does some calculations, and then it comes out as a new, all right? So we send numbers in. We do operations on those numbers, and then it sends the new number out, okay? That's pretty much what a function is. Okay. A function, um, you put the number into the function, you do the calculations, and a new number comes out. Okay. All right? What you put into the function is called the domain. It's always the x value. Okay. Okay? So, and then what you get out is called the range. And it's always the y value. Okay? okay. So in this function, we're going to, our function is y equals 5x plus 3. So no matter what we put in, we're always going to multiply by 5 and then add 3 when we're done. Okay? okay. So when we put numbers in, like the number 4, I put that 4 into the machine, I multiply by 5, and I add 3. Okay, so what will I get out? 23. 23, okay. 4 was your domain, and 23 was your range. Okay. You, does that make sense? Okay. Yes. Okay. So um, some functions, you could put any number in, and it won't be a problem at all. All right? For example, this 5x plus 3. I could put in any number and multiply by 5 and add 3. So I would be allowed to put a number in, so my domain will be the set of all the numbers, and we call them all real numbers. Okay, so I'm all, terrible little braces there. There we go. So I'm allowed to put any number into that function, and I'll get out a number. But some functions don't work that way. So I'm going to um, jump to this one for a moment. You're going to, I'm going to ask you to find the domain of all these, but we're going to jump to this one because there's a problem. Some of those numbers will be a problem. If you remember, for fractions, what can I never have on the bottom of a fraction? Oh, you can never have a, um, uh, whatever they're called. A, uh... There's one number that I'm never allowed to divide by. Uh, zero, right? That's right. So, if, if I put a number in, the only, I can put every number under the, in the planet except for one number that I'm not allowed to put in there because something minus 3 will turn into 0. What would that be? Uh, 0. 0 minus 3 will be a negative 3 and that'll be fine. Oh, uh, positive 3. Something minus 3. What will, what will be equal? What can I put there to make it equal 0? Uh, 0. 0 minus 3. Is that 0? Oh, Minus, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm doing multiplication, I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, plus 3, right? So if I put a, put, what, what do I put there for the x in? A positive 3. A positive 3, because 3 minus 3 would be 0. And I it would be a problem if we had 0 on the denominator. So we, we can put any number in the whole world in there, except for one number. 3. 3. So our domain will be all reals. Except x not equal to 3. Okay. All right. Now, this all reals. I'm, I'm a mathematician. I love to not write bunches of letters. I want to make symbols. And there is a symbol for the all reals. And it looks, I'm not going to draw it as nice as a typewriter or, the, or a, you know, the computer would do. So it looks, it has, it's an R. But it's a really fancy R. And it starts off like, that's similar to it. And I even sometimes has two little lines there at the beginning. But, but um, that's the all reals symbol. That means I can plug in any number except x not equal to 3. And then that's much shorter. I don't run out of room. Okay? Okay. All right. Now, we said that, let's go back up to A. We said that the, that the domain is all the x values. Right? Mm -hmm. It's all the inputs. And so when you have a bunch of ordered pairs, the domain is just going to be all the x values. 6 and 10, and 5, and 4, 
negative 1. So when I have ordered pairs, I just take all the x values. Oh, okay. okay. All right. I'm running out of room here. I might have to um, get rid of some of my writing here, like this one. We're done with it. So we'll move some space out here because I'm running out of room. Okay, let's do, let's do number, oh, bad color. I think that's the one. Yeah. Let's do num letter B. Is there a fraction with a with an x in the denominator for that one? No. No. Another thing you have to look for is a square root. Is there a square root in there? Uh -uh. No. Those are the two things that you'll need to look for to, to determine if there's a problem. Is there? So there's no problem. There's no there's no letter in the, there's no variable in the denominator and there's no square root. Right. If that happens, then then your domain is all real numbers. So we'll do domain. We'll do our little braces. We'll do our fancy squiggly R. It's all reals. Okay. We okay. already did C. Let's do D. What's the domain for that one? We have a square root. Do we have a square root? Or not a square root, just a square. Just a square. And so the squares are fine. I'm going to actually fix that because... So the square is fine. The problem is if we had a square root or... Um, a denominator with a variable in it. So does uh, that one have that? No. So what's the domain? What, what values could I put in there and square it, multiply by 2, subtract 3, multiply it, and add 4? Since there's no square root and there's no I, x in the denominator, I can, do all. I can do all real numbers. Okay. Later, when you get into Algebra 2 and then higher, there'll be one more thing you'll need to look for, and it'll be um, a logarithm, which you don't know what those are yet. But for right now, it'll only be if you have something in the denominator, a variable in the denominator, or a square root that you need to worry about it. Okay? okay? So it's all real numbers. Oh, terrible looking. There we go. Ah! <laughs> there we go. I should actually show you one on the computer so you'll see what it looks like. All right, now, the last one. We have a square root. So we can't do that, right? We can do, we can take the square roots of some numbers, but we can't take the square root of other numbers, at least not and be real numbers. Mm -hmm. And so what numbers can we never take the square root of? Zero. We, oh, we can't do them of um, negative numbers. That's correct. So how are we going to say that we only want positives? All real except negatives. <laughs> yeah, and so, and so, um, let's do instead, instead of that's kind of a sentence. All reals except negatives. And so, what we can do is we can say, and we usually say what the domain is. So, what we want them to be positive, right? Mm -hmm. So, we want all the numbers to be zero and bigger. Okay. So, we want the x value to be greater than or equal to what value? Uh. Zero. Very good. All right. So we want our domain to be positives. All right. right? So the, when you're doing your domain to find out what the domain is, it's all the x values. But the only thing you need to really be concerned about is if it had an x in the denominator or if it's a square root. Otherwise, your answer is all reals. Oh. Right mm -hmm. here, obviously, it's all the x values. Okay. okay? All right. Now, well, let's look at, though, when we go to pictures. Okay, and so when we do pictures, we only want the x values. Arrows mean that they're going to keep going forever and ever and ever and ever, okay? These dots mean they're not going to go forever and ever. The closed dot means that it's going to equal that, and the open dot means it's going to be not equal to that end dot, okay? Okay. All right, so let's do the first ones. Let's do this one over here. This one starts at what number? Zero. It starts at zero. So x is going to be greater than, and it's going to keep going, because that's why I'm saying greater than, okay? We're going this direction. All right, even though it's coming down, that's the y values is the down part. We want the x values. And so I'm starting at 0, and where is it going to end? But it's going to keep going. Forever and ever and ever, right? Okay, so it's x is going to be greater. You said 0. Is it going to be equal? Mm, no. It is. Um, if you had an open, then you'd know. They, they didn't put a close, uh. but it's if, it, if it's not... 
an open, it's automatically closed, so it's okay. going to be equal to. So then our domain will equal the x greater than or equal to 0. Okay. okay? All right. All right, now this one, let's do this one right here. Where does the x value start over here and they end there? Do you understand? Even though it's doing a diagonal, we're not worrying about the slant part. We're just worrying about the x values that it's taking up. So where's the first x value at? It's at negative 2. Actually, I shouldn't have drawn that. It's actually at negative 1. 1. Okay, is it equal to negative 1? Mm, yes. How do you no, know? I mean... How do you know? Well, wait, isn't the open one the greater or equal? That's the closed the one. The closed right? one is. Okay, so it's not. So to we it. have here, we have a negative one, and we have x is greater than it, but not equal. Right. Okay. okay. All right. And I'm going to put the x in the center because all the values are in between. All the x values are in between, and this will mean in between. So now I can just keep going with a one there. Oh, no, not a one. I'm sorry, not a one. What, no, what number is that one? Uh, three. three, okay, and it's going to go, it's all these numbers b b back this direction, so it's going to be like this. Am I going to put an equal or not? Yes. Why? Because it's a close. Circle. Very good, all right. How are you all feeling on this? Is this a little, mm -hmm. little bit hard? Yeah. Okay, so we could have written this in two different things. I could have done it like this. Instead of writing it all together, I could have wrote it, just a second. I could have written it like this. Um, I could have said, just did this side, and I could have said x is greater than negative 1. Okay. Then I could have done this side. And why did I choose and and not or? Because they're not going like this. Yes, remember they they're going, the arrow that's arrow right, they're not going apart. We're going in between these areas, so it's an and, okay? All right, then I could have said and x is less or equal to 3. Okay. Does that make more sense than the one I wrote yeah, before? Yeah, it, okay. it's like how I was doing it. Yes, so, so, so um, you could have put this all together in 1, putting the x in the center, the negative 1 here, the 3 here, okay. and going like... Yes, okay. Wait, my bad. This way and... That's yes. the, this, this is, these two answers are the same. Okay. Okay? All right. Let's do this last one. This one. All right. So, where are we going to start this? Right here, right? Mm -hmm. Well, this, does that mean that we're only going to do this side? We're doing this side also, right? Mm -hmm. And this one's going to keep going and going and going and going and going and going and going forever and ever and ever. So, which x, where's the x value is going to start? Um, in the middle. In the middle here. So, um, what x values am I using? Am I using the x value of 1? Um, uh-huh. Am I using 2? Uh-huh. 3? Mm -hmm. 4? No. Well, you will. I will, going. yes, it will. Yeah. Will I use 5? Oh, so this is like one of the ones where you use all numbers, right? Yes, it is, because this is going to go down backwards also, and I'm using all these back here also. So what do I call it when I'm using all of the numbers? Uh, all real numbers. All real numbers. So the domain is... All real so like, numbers. This one would be all real numbers. Yes. Very good. So we have... You know that the domain is all the x values. Okay? Mm -hmm. Sometimes we're going to find the domain with equations or functions. Okay? And then other times we're going to have a function as a picture, and you're going to have to find the domain of it. Okay? okay. So we, we learned the, what the domain is. And then the word, the def definition of, and now you're going to apply it with, with the math that you see. Okay. okay. All right, we're done.